Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to continue with what I'm calling the Kima Essentials. In part one, we went over a lot of content, and I realize that may be hard to sift through in the future. So moving forward, I'm going to make the videos a bit shorter and concentrate the material. So in this video, we're going to discuss the icons and some of the colors you'll find specifically in Kima Sounds. I hope you'll enjoy this, and if you're into this kind of thing, please consider liking and subscribing. Let's go ahead and dive into this. The first sound we're going to look at is one shaped like this. Notice the left side being flat like this. That means that there's no audio input. Instead, this sound is a source of sound. In this case, it's going to read back a file from the disk. The right side is curved, which means that it outputs audio. And the top and bottom are flat, which means there's no further effect on the sound or, and no visuals either. The next sound we'll look at is this one. Similar on three of the sides, but you notice this smaller semicircle, which means that this outputs its sub-audio, which means in this case that it's going to function more like a control signal. This sound it has a triangular input, which means that it's expecting to receive a spectrum or spectral information, which is exactly what it is receiving. Top and bottom, we already know what that means. And same thing with the right side. So it's outputting audio. Receives spectral information, outputs audio. Next, we have a sound that looks like this. It receives spectral information and outputs spectral information. And you see a sound that's double curly on both sides. That means it's transparent with respect to the sound. So whatever comes in goes out, no effect whatsoever. The triangle on the top means that there's some visual aspect. So you'll see this a lot on scopes, like an oscilloscope, or in this case on the annotation. Anything you write in this sound will appear in the virtual control surface so that you can read it. This sound here, the last one in this sequence, you'll notice that it has a left pointing triangle. That means that it has information that refers back to the sounds earlier. As we know that the right side being double curly like that means that it's transparent. The output, it depends entirely upon the input. Next, we have a sound shape like this. The left side being small like that means that it's a constructor sound, so it's going to use information written in itself to reference sounds earlier to build a final sound. The right side being double triangular means that the output is variable. A sound that looks like this, as we know the triangular top means that there's going to be some visual aspect and the sides like this again mean that there's no audio input but instead a source. So there's a source of images here that are being output. The last thing I want to talk about is some of the colors you'll see in the graphics for the sound. Anytime you see green, as in this sound here, you know that it's going to affect the amplitude. So that's a dead giveaway. That, that you're dealing with the amplitude anytime you see green. Anytime you see a pinkish red color, that means that frequency is going to be manipulated in some fashion. Anytime you see purple, it has to do with time. So really common to see as in this case uh, in a delay. And finally, anytime you see bright red specifically with an exclamation mark to start it off, you know you're dealing with cappy talk. So this is particularly useful as you start to build your sounds. You'll know that what sounds expect to receive as well as what they output or what they do. It's also particularly useful to know this stuff when you open a sound and you want to better understand it. So you can see this sound here has a lot of what we just talked about. That's a brief introduction to the sound shapes and the icons in Kima. There's far too many to go over specifically, but knowing this stuff is a great start 
and you'll understand better how sounds behave and what they do. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you're into this kind of thing, and we'll see you in the next video.